Hi, this is BB. So, um, the picture is kind of grainy because the camera is like 2 megapixels or something. Like that. It's a cheap um, laptop I bought. Which uh, I'm grateful for because I lost I have my own internet access. And, um, I have a friend who has a son who is into electronics, who is into, um, I think, coding. I'm not sure what he does, but he knows people. And I'm sure if I'm being hacked, that there are people who are being hacked as well. And they've encountered these things. And um, I, I record myself and I'm listening to it. I talk in my sleep there. I find I talk in my sleep. So... Um, it's just my cat trying to get under the cover. I sleep on a chair. My sofa. So I'm hoping that he you know, give me something. I need to work really badly. I went to my um, my utilities company. And they have the HUD money, the HUD monies. So hopefully they can help me with the rent as well as my utilities. Which I think should not be a problem. So unless these people interfere, of course. Let me tell you something. At some point, I believe they're going to get caught because of their own stupidity. Their own stupidity is going to get them caught. Their own stupidity is going to... You see, when you do too much, it starts to become obvious. And they're like dumb blanks. Just dumb blanks. They just do too much. Somebody will start to notice. Come on now. I told you when I spoke to an IRS agent, I was thinking, what if they hacked in from the IRS and was, you know, just doing all kinds of stupid shit? The IRS agent did not deny that. Nor what she did say, I was going to say, nor confirm. But then I thought what she did say was a possibility. Well, she said they are getting smarter and smarter. Which means it's not something that she was unheard of. It's the first time she's ever heard it. That it's such a notion that somebody could actually hack into the, F uh, the IRS. She's heard it before. And it probably has happened before. There are breaches all over the place. But in any case, with this, I'm not sure. So... One of the things that's happening to me is my nose is burning. I went this morning. I signed up for uh, the HUD money. I signed up since last Monday. They said it was going to take to to uh, five to seven business days. So this is the sixth business day. So it should be fine. So I'm hoping that they actually will do something, you know, to help me um, get these these this rent over and this money's this money's paid out. Whenever. I go to sleep at night, like I have two cameras on, and I sleep with uh, like two cameras and a light on. One is facing that window, one is facing me with the window. I close, I lock the two windows in my bedroom, I, I just pull the door in. I try to leave the camera in case if anybody comes out to try to get to me from here. I don't know where they're coming in from, but I'm pretty certain. I mean, hey, look, one proof that I have is my faucet, the head was turned around. It was turned around. It was turned around. How the heck would they do that? It didn't just happen overnight. Like I said, the guy upstairs called the um, the person who lived here before and said it. The woman said that she knew the, the, the faucet's head was, the, the, the levers were turned to the outside, not the inside. And I'm still waking up with the headaches. I'm still waking up with the um, these things in my head. I saw there's blood on my pillow. I'm going to try to put a, a snapshot of the blood here, the pillow here today. You look at that and tell me if that doesn't look like something is wrong. I don't see, I don't have like dried blood anywhere in my hair or my body. You know, so what happened on my pillow of all things? On my pillow, there's no open areas on the cat. That's a lot of blood. I would have noticed it. She would have had some dried blood on her on her coat. On her fur would have had some dried blood. There was none. But that amount of blood. Where did it where could it possibly have gotten there? I am just hoping that it's mine. If it's somebody else's, then something is wrong. 
then somebody is coming into my home at night. These people, I don't know what they're after. I believe that adrenochrome is one of these things they're after. But I have a habit because of my work. I say things and they tend to happen. I think they feel like I'm a psychic. This is my belief system. And they're afraid. And I think they're digging in my head to see, to find their own destiny. I, I have no idea what they do because if this has a, like a psychic connection. If you look at Kevin Christian's uh, vi uh, videos, you will find that it seems this, they seem to be doing the same thing. They're, they're in the man's head 24 hours a day. I don't know what they're doing, what they're looking for. They're looking for something, and I don't know what it is. They're waking him up at night. One of the things they'll do is keep you awake all night. To keep you that brain activity going. If not, if they go into a sort of withdrawal. Whatever they're latching onto in your brain is keeping them feeling energized and keeping them feel like they're connected to Lucifer or Baal or Beelzebub or whoever. I don't know. Or some angel or some fallen angel. I have no idea. A wood nymph, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe a termite. I have no idea. Whatever they're finding is like they're juicing almost. Old people, young people, in between, they're doing it. Whoever started this is going to find that a lot of kids are going to die because of this. If, they don't, if, if the government don't, don't curb this. I shouldn't say that. But I'm just being realistic here. Because they're going to start doing the same thing. This video is not for kids, by the way. If they flog the video, then they flog it. I don't know. I mean, flag it. If they flag it, they flag it. I really don't care. But I'm just saying. It's like... This is called... It's a war. Like, I'm living in a war zone. I haven't worked... I haven't gotten a client in months. I'm running on fumes. I'm running on, on pure food stamps. I don't know what will happen. I don't know how this will turn out. I have no idea how this works. I'm feeling like um, like I'm being threatened also, which is one of the things that Kanapka had said. The cop who, who in 2020 who started this, he said that they're threatening people. They're threatening people. They're threatening their families. He told me these things because he trusted me. He was just telling me what was happening. And then shortly after saying these things to me, he sounded well like I did two, two years ago or a year ago or even now. Do the math on this. Irrational, acting like a child, like he was high, like he was drunk. You're wondering what the what is wrong with him? I was questioning it. What was wrong with him? And I'm wondering then, was I acting the same way? I guess I was. What are the odds here? I've never met him in person. I've never met him in person. They would put people to make it look like I met him. These people are nasty little fuckwads with nothing to do than to just other than just getting on with their damn lives. Why don't they just get on with their lives? I don't understand this. Because I told you when I was staying at the motel, a guy showed up there in, in a truck, in a white truck. He drove a white truck that looked exactly like him. And when this thing started, they were talking to me and I was responding. I knew who it was. It was one person. And I was responding to her. It wasn't somebody I didn't know. I could hear the voice. I knew it was her because I spoke to her before. So she came there and she... Um, I was in the I was in the jacuzzi and I'm I'm you know and then she told me turn around, and then I turned around and the guy was right like standing at the door watching me and then he looked away. She did it twice the same day. Twice. She told me to turn around and I did. You know, how I wish that I could record what they're saying in my head. I wish that I could record to have some proof that somebody is talking to me. But this is where they get away with it. It's called voice to skull. The problem is I'm afraid, and I, there's so many of them, and they've got me by the short hairs. 
because they're threatening me that I'm never going to be able to work again. Without an income, a woman can't survive. She becomes homeless like a bum, and this is what the, these men want. There's a Guyanese man in here, he's all for that. He's all for that. These men are deranged lunatic. They're crazy. The male, they're deranged lunatic. They have this sense of ownership over people. I don't know where they get it from. The psychics were always telling me about this, this state of entitlement. They felt entitled. Entitled. You know why? How does one become entitled? To this extent how does one get to that state of entitlement over an, a person's assets and then the human being themselves how do you get there you have assets you utilize them you get is unopposed nobody is opposing you nobody is interfering nobody is telling you hey that wait a minute though that's mine you can't have that they start to eventually feel it's theirs That's understandable to an extent, even though it makes you angry because it's your shit they're using, all right? You get angry. But we, they went from that to having ownership, these feelings of ownership over me, over the physical body. Now, how did that happen? Where do you go from the physical assets to me, the, the physical body, this right here? How, how, do you, how do you go to that, of having ownership over me? I'm not a baby. I'm not a child. When they look at me, they see a grown woman. I can't, I'm trying to like make the connection here of them utilizing all my assets to the point where they feel ownership over me. Where do we get into the emotional part here? Where do we cover these, um, this mental, or mentally, that mental leap to just stealing from somebody to feeling like I now own that person? I mean, I'm, a, I'm not a, a thief to that extent. I've stolen things in the past, you know, not much, but nothing that, you know, uh, uh, just could, uh, that has to do with like millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands or something big that, you know, that, that somebody's looking for me and with, to want to put a gun to my head. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I don't understand this. So where do you get ownership, get to this ownership over the people? How much money did they steal? Did they put the money in my name? Did they put the money in my name so they feel like if the IRS, did the IRS uh, or, or the FBI, are they looking for who is putting, why does this woman have all this money in her name? I can't, I don't think that's it. You know why I don't think that's it? It's because I had a, a, an, FB, an FBI a uh, friend, it was my, not my friend, it was a friend of my friend, who said that he did searches. He wasn't, he wasn't, he is, I believe, an FBI agent. And he did do the searches and he couldn't find anything. Like, you know, so said, well, I was being looked for, like somebody was looking for me, um, I, was, uh, I was being hunted, or I was on an FBI watch list, and they wanted me in questioning with some stolen money, or some stolen green card, or some stolen, somebody accused me of rape or pedophile or, or talking to them in their sleep. So anything, no matter what. He did the searches, he didn't find anything. So that wasn't it. So I'm trying to see, it's like, this mental leap, what, what's this gap, right? From stealing assets and feeling, uh, well, the assets is now they're there. Now, I, if anything, if you steal someone's stuff, and you would feel like you would feel like this person is like a threat, right? Like a threat to you, because if the more money and you start finding more money, more money, more money coming, whoa! Wait a minute now. What if she starts? What if she comes to look for her stuff, which is me? So the, I would be more of a threat. But it's not just that. It's just like they have this disdain for me. Is it because I didn't look back for my inheritance? Well, that should be easy peasy for them, wouldn't it? Just take it and fucking go. What, since, you know, when did, when did this body become their enemy? When did this become their property? When did this become an obsession? I don't understand that. 
What is this obsession with me and harming me? If this has got to be the most bizarre, weird, fucked up set of people. I, I don't understand this. What is that mental connection or that emotional connection to me? To this extent? Just for an inheritance that I was not looking back for. They're saying this person is looking for me. That person was looking for me. Well, they stole something. Now they had to watch me then for the rest of... The only thing I could understand from this is that they had to watch me for the rest of their lives. Just in case if someone who uh, was involved in it or um, was party to it, you know, comes forward to look for me, conscience got better of them and to tell me, well, look, you know what? This happened. That this happened or this happened or this happened. It's been three years. No one has found me. Do they have to put me through this? And they're hacking extensively. Why did they wait 20 years of me being over here to steal the stamps? Or steal my father's uh, shares or, or, or steal my, me, me and my father's shares or money from the bank. My father died in 2008. Why wait so long? This does not make any sense. Why did they have to come seek me out, turn my life upside down just to stir up shit? Why? Something more to it. There's got to be something more to it. Any, any ideas, let me know. Please help me to figure this out. In the meanwhile, stay safe.